In the last two videos, we saw how to build MO diagrams from the Lewis structure, using the hybridization and geometry of each atom to give us an idea of which atomic orbitals are overlapping with which other ones. We saw what types of molecular orbitals we could make, sigma, sigma star, pi, pi star, and non-bonding, but we didn't talk about their relative energies aside from saying that bonding orbitals are lower in energy than antibonding ones. Once we understand how orbital energies can be predicted, we'll have the tools to construct an MO diagram for just about any organic molecule. The energies of molecular orbitals generally follow this basic trend. The lowest energy orbitals are sigma bonding orbitals because these types of bonds are particularly strong, and sigma bonding electrons are therefore pretty stable. Slightly higher in energy are pi bonding orbitals. These aren't as stable as sigma bonding orbitals because side-to-side -side overlap that's in pi bonds is weaker than the direct overlap of sigma bonds. Next come non-bonding orbitals. These aren't stabilized by spreading out across multiple atoms as bonding orbitals are. Non-bonding orbitals are usually isolated on a single atom and are at the same energy as the atomic orbitals they came from. Next higher in energy are the pi star antibonding orbitals that correspond with the pi bonding orbitals. These antibonding orbitals are relatively low in energy because it doesn't take very much energy to break a pi bond. Highest in energy are sigma star orbitals because sigma bonds are typically fairly strong and hard to break. You have to put a lot of energy in to break a sigma bond. This gives us a general outline of the five regions of the MO diagram. There are also trends within each region. The most important trend is with charge. Negative charge raises the energies of orbitals, and positive charge lowers their energies. The next trend is with electronegativity. The more electronegative the atoms associated with a particular orbital, the lower the energy of that orbital. So a CO pi orbital is lower in energy than a CC pi orbital, because O is more electronegative than C. Likewise, a CO pi star orbital is lower in energy than a CC pi star orbital. The next trend is with hybridization. In general, sp hybrid orbitals are lower in energy than sp2 hybrid orbitals, which are lower in energy than sp3 hybrid orbitals. Unhybridized p orbitals are the highest in energy of all. This is especially useful for non-bonding orbitals. There are several other trends, but these are the most important three for us. So let's use this information to construct the MO diagram of HCN, hydrogen cyanide. The Lewis structure of HCN looks like this. First, we need to identify which types of orbitals we have. Here we have two sigma bonds, CH and CN, two pi bonds, both CN, and a lone pair on nitrogen. For each bond, we know there's a corresponding antibonding orbital as well. Now we need to arrange these orbitals according to their energies, based on the trends we discussed. The sigma bonding orbitals are the lowest in energy, and CN sigma will probably be slightly lower in energy than CH sigma, because N is more electronegative than H. The two sigma star orbitals also follow the same trend. Cn sigma star is lower in energy than Ch sigma star for the same reason. Next, we have the Cn pi bonds. Both are equal in energy because they're identical. And the Cn pi star orbitals. Finally, we have that nitrogen lone pair. It's in a non-bonding orbital, so in the middle of the MO diagram. It happens to be in an sp hybrid orbital because nitrogen's other valence orbitals are used to make the cn sigma and pi bonds we've already used. We'll fill up the diagram with electrons, 1 plus 4 plus 5 for 10 total electrons, and voila! 
there we have it, the complete MO diagram of HCN.